Hi, everyone. Welcome. We are going to wait just a few seconds for everybody to enter the webinar and we'll get started soon. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our UC Berkeley virtual visit for today. My name is Celine. I am an incoming senior at UC Berkeley. I'm double majoring in sociology and cognitive science, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I wanted to thank you all so much for being here today and tuning into our virtual visit, um, especially because of everything that's going on in the world right now, no matter where you are. We as Berkeley community want you to know that we uh, stand with you. We acknowledge and recognize the challenges and the pain that are stemming from everything going on. We also invite you to read our chancellor's message on standing together at news.berkeley.edu to know what our community stands for and how we are helping our students during this time, no matter where they're located. So again, thank you all so much for being here and we'll get started with our virtual visit for today. But before we do, just a little bit of housekeeping. All right, so this virtual visit is going to start off with a 40 minute presentation from our wonderful tour givers. Go ahead and feel free to type questions in our Q&A function down below. Uh, we welcome any and all questions. We have a team of amazing back end folks who are ready to answer your questions for you. There will also be polls throughout the presentation. Make sure to answer those. We want to see who's here today, who's participating. Uh, and if you miss any part of this presentation for any reason, no worries. There is a different recorded version on our website that you can refer to afterwards. Uh, this is going to be a campus overview fully from the student perspective, which means that there is no admissions or financial aid information. If you do have any questions about that, we will gladly direct you to the financial aid or admissions office. But remember that we are not official admission representatives. So that means that all of our questions that we answer won't be related to those. But you can go ahead and register for an admission presentation on their website, admissions.berkeley.edu. And finally, we will be ending with a Q&A with your questions. So make sure to feel free to an uh, ask all questions in the Q&A function and we'll see you later for the Q&A. So I'll go ahead and pass it off to our guides for today, Will and Seneca, go ahead and take it away. Hello everyone, uh, welcome. My name is Will and my pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm from Mill Valley, California, which is in the Bay Area, just north of San Francisco, so still pretty close to Berkeley. I'm a rising sophomore and I'm intending on majoring in human geography, which is actually pretty unique to Berkeley. I might be adding a second major in interdisciplinary studies field or ISF, which is kind of our create your own major program, which is pretty neat. Some of my main involvements on campus include Delta Phi Epsilon, which is a co-ed professional foreign service fraternity. I'm also a part of Reuse, which is our on-campus thrift store. I participate in the Cal Running Club. I'm a part of M our local chapter of Amnesty International, as well as the Language Exchange Program, which is where I meet with my now friend, Isabella. She help she's from Brazil, so she helps me with Portuguese. I help her with English, and it's a really fun time. And before coming to Berkeley, I deferred my acceptance and took a gap year and studied abroad in Salamanca in Spain for the whole year. So if you have any questions about study abroad, uh, feel free to ask them. And without further ado, I'll hand it over to Senka. Awesome, thanks Will. Hi everybody, welcome to UC Berkeley, albeit virtual. My name is Seneca and I am a rising junior. I use the she, her, her pronouns and I'm from Goleta, California, which is on the central coast. So shout out to any peeps from California attending today. Um, my major is molecular and cell biology. I'm studying genetics specifically within that and I'm doing a minor in bioengineering. And a few of the things I'm involved in on campus are Greek life. I also am involved in the bioprinting at Berkeley organization, which is basically where we use glorified jello and then we put cells in it and we try to print human organs. So a little bit of a fun science bit there. I also do bioengineering research. I'm in the dance community here at Cal in an organization called DanceWorks where I do hip hop and contemporary dance. I'm also involved in Daraja, which is a program where we are partnered with a partner school in Kenya and we help them edit their college admissions essays, their school newspaper and all of that fun stuff. And then I am part of the Cal Greeks Alcohol Task Force, which aims to promote safe partying and alcohol consumption practices within the Greek system. And I'm super excited to be talking to you all today. 
Yeah, thanks, Seneca. So a big welcome to all of you. You'll be seeing a poll popping up now, just so we can get a little bit of a better idea of who all is joining us today. Whoops. Um, and we'll also start off with a few uh, nice pictures of our campus. In the top left, you can see California Memorial Stadium. This is where our football games are held. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of football, but going to these games is a lot of fun. There's so much spirit, you know, the marching band out there, it's, it's really fun. In the bottom left, you'll see a picture of the inside of one of our engineering buildings, which has some pretty neat architecture. And then in the top right, you'll see Memorial Glade, some students hanging out, maybe studying. And you'll see Doe Library and the Campanile uh, behind them. Awesome, it seems like a lot of you are high school seniors, which is great. And then in the middle, you'll also see another picture of our beautiful Campanile, our clock and bell tower, uh, surrounded by some trees. There's a ton of nature on campus, so I really like this picture especially. You'll also see that we recently celebrated two milestones. In 2018, we celebrated 150 years since our founding. And in the bottom left, you'll see uh, that this year actually we're celebrating 150 years of women at Berkeley, which is, in, uh, you know, a really great thing because women didn't even have the right to vote until 50 years later. So this has really been an important part of our history. And so we really like to acknowledge that and it's, it's been a really fun celebration this year. So onto our agenda for today. First, uh, we'll be giving you a bit of an overview of Berkeley, some history and things like that. Then we'll go into uh, academics and just some more detail about the different colleges. We'll also touch on housing and dining, health and safety, student resources, student life, athletics, as well as libraries and research. And then we'll finish off with some last campus highlights. Um, if you have any questions throughout this or still have questions at the end, please use the Q&A. Uh, we have a lot of people on the back end who are really excited to answer your questions, as well as Seneca and I. We love any questions you have. Awesome. So just a little bit of history about our campus. This again is the photo of our beautiful Campanile, our clock and bell tower on campus. As Will mentioned, it's actually the third tallest clock and bell tower in the world, which I think is pretty awesome. And it is just iconic. Love to take pictures with it. I honestly fangirl over it quite a lot and I missed it a lot this past summer. So a little bit of background about our campus as a whole. I know a little bit of a digression there. We were founded in 1868 and we were the first undergraduate UC school founded. So there are nine UC schools and those include places like UCLA, UC Irvine, UC Santa Barbara, UC San Diego, and a few more. And we were the first one, which means that we have a little bit of special circumstances when it comes to the names that we can go by. So this really confused me as I was a honestly senior, junior growing up because I live about six hours away from Berkeley and it really wasn't on my radar, but we have multiple names. So we go by UC Berkeley, Cal, the University of California, sometimes UCB, but we don't love that one. So if you hear us say any of those names, know that we are referring to this campus, which is the University of California, Berkeley. And our mascot is the Golden Bears. We are a super spirited group and we love to cheer on our Golden Bears to rep the blue and gold all the time. And so you'll see a few pictures of our mascot Oski on the next few slides to really give you a sense of our school spirit. And we have a pretty awesome campus size of about 31,000 undergraduates and 12,000 graduate students. However, just because there are a lot of us, doesn't mean our campus is completely unnavigatable. We do have a campus size where you can walk across in about 10 to 15 minutes. So very awesome and very doable. These are also a few awesome pictures of different aspects of our campus. On the left, you'll see Sather Gate, which was the traditional entrance to our campus a long time ago. The cable car system from San Francisco actually used to stop there, which is pretty cool. In the middle is Sturdy the Bear, which is our statue that marks the entrance to California Memorial Stadium, 
which is where the stadium is located. There's also some classrooms, the student athlete center, as well as the visitor center, which is just the best on campus, really. There's also the seal on the top right hand corner of your screen, and that is one of the seals that marks the entrance to Memorial Glade, which is our central green space on campus. And that whole area, additionally, those seals are dedicated to the student, staff, and faculty that served in World War II. And so it really just is a great way to honor their memories. And as such, we do not step on the seal, be partly because of that, but also because of many superstitions and rumors among Berkeley students that if you step on the seal, you will either lose your 4.0, be doomed to bad grades for the rest of eternity, potentially never get a 4.0, and a whole a lot of other academic misfortune that is best to be avoided. So if you ever visit campus, you'll see it part. You'll see all the crowds part around that seal in efforts to get good grades. And below that is Oski, who is our mascot. We love Oski. If you ever see him around campus or at a sporting event, be sure to go up and give him a hug. He's great. And we just really love to see the school spirit embodied in Oski. And our campus culture is very difficult to describe in just one set of terms because we just have so many amazing individuals that make up our campus. But one thing that I think we all have in common is that we are change makers. So we see the world and we see how it could change to be better. And that is our goal. That's what we want to do. And that actually definitely started with the free speech movement, which is a social movement that took place on our campus in 1964 and 1965 where students prior to that were most college campuses around the world and this was a time of huge tension in the world the civil rights movement was happening the wars were happening and so it was definitely very important to students that they were allowed to get out there make their voices heard and they had a series of protests all peaceful don't worry where they basically told the administration they told the professors we want to be able to rally for political causes and organize on our campus. And that was a few months long. And then after that, they came to an agreement where students are now allowed to, you know, put up posters, have tabling sessions, have protests. So it really is a celebration of this free speech in general that our students are able to do that. And their legacy of leadership, challenging the status quo and entrepreneurship really lives on today. And it's it's an energy unlike any other. When you step onto our campus, you will feel it in the students that you talk to. And it is just really a great part of Berkeley that I think we owe it all to the alumni of our past. Our community is highly, highly involved in compassion, passion, and social justice. And we really are striving for diversity and excellence in everything that we do. We definitely have come a long way, but we still have a long ways to go. And this year, we actually admitted our most diverse freshman class since the 1980s. So that is a huge step towards becoming a more inclusive place. And we are very excited to keep on working. All right, so um, just to go over some more photos to add on to that. In the top left, you can see sort of what Seneca was talking about, about free speech and protesting. In the middle, you can see some of that uh, innovation happening with you know, research being done in a lab as well as outdoors. In the bottom left and the top right, you can see that strong spirit that both Seneca and I have already mentioned. You can see Oski in the top right with our rally committee and in the bottom left, one of my favorite parts of Cal, the Cal Band. And then at the bottom right, you can see one of our uh, recent celebrations. This was for our clock and bell tower. And we had dancers come and, you know, there's really always a lot going on at Berkeley. And so I really appreciated that. So to get into academics a bit, uh, we have, and you'll also see another poll popping up, uh, just to get an idea of what colleges you all might be interested in. We have five undergraduate colleges at Berkeley, the College of Letters and Science, the Rouser College of Natural Resources, the College of Environmental Design, as well as the Colleges of Chemistry and Engineering. So when you apply, you're going to want to apply to just one of these five colleges, but it is possible to transfer once you get um, 
to Berkeley and to another college. That being said, it is definitely more difficult to transfer into the colleges of engineering or chemistry. Uh, they just have a lot more uh, requirements. Uh, for example, letters in science, though, all students enter undeclared. So if you're not really sure about uh, what you want to major in, like I totally was, uh, that's a really great option. You're able to double major within any of these colleges, and that would just be called, you know, doing a double major. But if you want to get two majors that are in separate colleges, that would actually be called a simultaneous degree. So if I want to get, you know, a degree in geography from letters in science, as well as one in you know, landscape architecture from the College of Environmental Design. That would be feasible. It just means that I need to complete all the requirements for both the College of Letters and Science as well as for environmental design. So it just re requires, you know, more planning, meeting with an advisor really early on, uh, right when you get to campus, just being able to plan some of your courses better, but it's definitely doable. Awesome. Yes, our first college is the College of Letters and Science, and this college actually houses three quarters of our undergraduate population. So that is pretty awesome that we have such a diversity of different majors and programs offered. There are five divisions within the College of Letters and Science. So there's arts and humanities, biological sciences, mathematical and physical sciences, social sciences, as well as undergraduate studies. So really you will find everything from physics to computer science to languages, linguistics, to economics in this college. And it's honestly such a great place. My major is in this college and what my favorite part is about the College of Letters and Science is its liberal arts approach to education. So there's this thing called the seven course breadth requirement where you get to take seven courses in seven different subject areas and really just explore. You really get to take things that you might not have taken traditionally. For example, I'm a biology major, but I got to take French and Italian literature. And that honestly was such an enriching part of my undergraduate experience. And I really enjoy being able to explore a little bit while still completing my degree. Yeah, I totally agree, Seneca. Lots of flexibility. I love the language classes. We have a ton every semester, so I definitely recommend those. Next, we have our Rouser College of Natural Resources. This, I actually just went under a, a name change. So if you've heard of CNR, the College of Natural Resources, they're all the same thing. All of these programs are environmental focused within this college. So there's environmental science, economics, interdisciplinary studies, energy, forestry, and biology biological sciences, all with sort of this lens of sustainability and social justice. Something I really appreciate about this college is that they don't just value teaching within the classroom, but also outside. So there's a lot of field trips for these classes. I took one uh, last fall. It was California Earth Science in the Field. It was basically just a camping trip. So I went with my professor, 15 students, and three graduate students. We had lunch on the beach every day. We went to Pinnacles National Park. It was really such an amazing experience. Uh, and having our professor kind of teach geology and how our world has been formed like right in front of us was so impressive. And so there are some really, really interesting environmental programs within this college. Next up, we have the College of Environmental Design. This is our smallest college on campus and has three departments. There's a department of architecture, landscape architecture, and then city and regional planning. And we have a real, they have a really nice uh, mission statement, which we've included here, which is to craft ecologically sustainable and resilient, prosperous and fair, healthy and beautifully built environments. And something neat about this college too is that in the top right of this photo, you see all those windows lined up that are, have the lights on. Those are actually studio spaces. And so students can get their own studio uh, to work on projects for their class or stuff they just wanna do for fun. And so you get definitely a really individualized um, attention here, as well as, you know, there's a big push for creativity and building environments that are sustainable, which is super important. Next up, we have the College of Chemistry. There are about a thousand students in this college and they fall under two departments, the Department of Chemistry, as well as the Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering. You're gonna, like I said before, you're gonna wanna apply directly into the college because it's a little bit harder to transfer into. And something neat is that uh, 
this college is actually ranked number one globally. Uh, I have a ton of friends in this college. They're all part of the chemistry fraternity, which I still kind of find kind of funny, but there's a lot of cool opportunities through that too. And maybe some of you have heard of Lewis dot uh, structures. That was actually pioneered here in a chemistry 1A class. And additionally, 16 elements have been discovered here, which is something that no other university can say. So there's really a clear um, symbiosis between incredible research going on as well as really impactful teaching that is spreading throughout the nation. And so if you're looking to do anything regarding chemistry, definitely apply directly to here. Awesome. And our next college is the College of Engineering. And this is a super fun, super dynamic college where so much research is being done to better our world. As you can see on the slide, we've got seven departments in this college. First up, bioengineering, civil and environmental engineering, electrical engineering and computer science, also known as EECS, industrial engineering and operations research, material sciences, mechanical engineering, and nuclear engineering. So there's really a breadth of things to choose from here and lots of amazing, amazing programs. All of these are ranked in the top nine globally. So you really can't go wrong with the program in the College of Engineering, as well as some of the most beautiful architecture on campus in my experience. I really love both of these buildings that are shown, McLaughlin Hall, as well as Hearst Mining Circle, and in the distance of that photo, Hearst Memorial Mining Building. So just a really gorgeous place for really amazing minds. One program that's pretty cool in our College of Engineering is the Management Entrepreneurship and Technology Program, also known as MET. And that's a program that combines two degrees. So one degree in engineering from the College of Engineering, and then one in business from our Haas School of Business, which we'll talk about in a second. And so this is a very unique program because it's combining entrepreneurship and engineering and really caters towards people who are interested in going into technology and all of those incredible things that are really starting to break the surface that we're starting to break the surface of as a society right now so lots of great opportunities here in silicon valley and we actually are the number one contributor of interns to silicon valley so that's a pretty cool fun fact definitely recommend coming to our engineering tour which is mondays and thursdays at 4 p.m for more detailed info on the college of engineering as well and next up, we're going to talk about our graduate schools. So we have the Haas School of Business, which is the business school I mentioned just a second ago. It has an undergraduate program where you can do the last two years of your business degree on, um, or the last two years of your undergraduate experience as a business degree, as well as the global management program, which is the freshman entrance program of that where you spend your first semester in London and then following you take classes here where you do a lot of awesome business related things and you end up with a undergraduate degree in business for both of those programs where but for the first one you apply as a sophomore and the second one you apply directly into as a freshman. The undergraduate the other graduate schools that we have are the Graduate School of Education, Information, Berkeley Law School, the School of Social Welfare, the School of Optometry, the School of Journalism, the School of Public Health, and the School of Public Policy. So lots of options for graduate school there. Yeah, so just to add some more specific detail about uh, academics here at Berkeley, I'll use the example of my linguistics class, Intro to Linguistics, that I just took in the spring. It has a pretty standard structure. So I had lecture and section. So I would have lecture three times a week in the morning with my professor. The whole class was about 130 students. Um, and then to get more individualized support, we also had sections. So I would meet with a PhD student or a graduate student on Tuesdays and she would uh, lead about 15 to 20 of us through some example problems, we could ask questions, and she had graduated with a linguistics degree, so she knew a ton of stuff and was a super helpful resource. And both my professor and my uh, graduate student, or GSI, were both required to have office hours. So I used this time to go in and talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, maybe get some questions answered, 
just, you know, ask them how they're doing, how their day is going, get to know them a little bit better. Or I've really liked office hours just to kind of get to know more information about the field. Maybe I, something in lecture piqued my curiosity that we didn't talk about. And so that's been really fun. Our class, our student to faculty ratio is 18 to one and 85% of classes are fewer than 50 students. So although my introductory linguistics class was on the larger side, it has definitely not been the norm for me. In the fall, my largest class was about 35, 40 students, and I had multiple classes that were 15 students, 20 students, 25. And in the fall, also half of my classes are gonna be 15 students or less. So there are definitely lots of classes that are really small. And even if you have a bigger class, there are tons and tons of resources to make sure that you get all the help that you may want. For example, there's also the Student Learning Center. And this is where you can go in and get free tutoring for essentially any subject. I've loved this uh, Student Learning Center or the SLC because they have really good tutors for writing. And I was kind of worried, you know, it's a college class, my writing's gotta be better. So I had, uh, I went in same day, uh, got someone to look over my paper and I was shocked. They had so many good tips for me that it, it really made sure I got a good grade. And so I've, I've loved using all of these different resources and they've been really helpful. So regardless of the class size or the type of class you're taking, there are lots of different ways to make sure you're really understanding the content and get to explore some of your curiosities you might have. I definitely agree with Will. The Student Learning Center is a great resource and I highly recommend that all of you check it out when you get to campus or even online. We have a lot of great resources on our campus as we've mentioned and one of those is definitely housing. So we have a lot of great different housing options and I'll just go really quickly through them here. We have our traditional high-rise dorms which are units one, two, and three and those are located on the south side of our campus. All of them are fairly close to campus. And in a typical year, those would have doubles and triples as well as mini suites, as well as suites in some of the cases. And that is where I lived last year or two years ago. Oh my goodness. Um, and it was definitely a great experience. You get the traditional long hallways and there are dining halls for all of those. So very close, very easy to get food and a great experience. We also have Clark Kerr, which is our low rise dorm. It's a little further from campus, but the rooms are a little bit bigger and there's a ton of great outdoor space. So there's lots of lawns as well as hiking trails, a track, a pool, all sorts of great amenities there to explore the outdoorsy side of Berkeley. Blackwell Hall is another option and that is our newest dorm. It honestly looks like a hotel. It is so beautiful. It's on the south side, just across the street from Unit 3, and they have a great gym. It's all singles and doubles, so a little lower occupancy housing for those that want it, and a great option. Foothill and Stern are on the north side of our campus, and or, well, the east side technically, but near the north side. And those are really close to the College of Engineering. So a lot of engineering students like to live there just for the ease of access of walking across the street and straight into their classes. Stern is our female identifying dorm. So if that is something that you are interested in, definitely recommend checking Stern out as well. Both Foothill and Stern are suite style or Foothill is suite style rooms and then Stern is dorm style rooms. So lots of options to choose from there depending on what you're looking for. few details about our housing. So we have a freshman get priority system. The one thing that we really recommend that anyone who's applying for housing do is that you choose any room, any location as your last preference. So you rank all of the different types of rooms and the different residential housing options that you like. And then the last preference should always be any room, any location to really maximize your chances of a housing offer. There are a lot of awesome resources in the dorms as well, such as the residential assistants, which are also known as RAs, and they put on all sorts of awesome programming for residents. They're really there just to like make sure that your transition into living in a dorm is a good one. And they're there for you to just talk about pretty much anything. They do these things called bear talks just to check in with you. Sometimes they will feed you, which is always nice. And they're just a really nice resource to have in case you just want to talk to someone who is an older student 
and knows, you know, different things about campus that you might want to learn. We also have theme programs, which are usually identity or interest based programs for students that want to live with a group of like minded students or students from the same background. So a few examples of this include having our African American theme program. We also have a Latin X theme program, Unity House theme program, which is very awesome, highly recommend. And then we also have a bunch of other great theme programs as well to explore. Security is also a bit of a concern just because we are in an urban area. So it's important to be aware of your surroundings as you know any college campus. And so we have a three point security system in our dorms where you tap into the door to get in with your student ID card. And then you have your physical key to your room as well as tapping into the elevator. So lots of security there as well as at night you have a community service officers stationed at the front desk to just check residents in and check their guests in just to make sure that everyone feels secure. We also have some great common areas, including study areas, common rooms with ping pong tables and the pool tables and some great laundry facilities. And a meal plan is included no matter what dorm you live in. So you can always get that good, good dining hall food no matter where you are. Continuing student housing is very varied and a little bit different. Some students do choose to live on campus for their continuous housing, usually in an apartment or a suite style. There's also affiliated properties like Garden Village and Enclave, which are apartment style that you can opt into. We also have a lot of students living in off-campus apartments. That's currently where I live. And those are great. You find those on Facebook pages or through word of mouth, as well as through the Berkeley Rentals office. There's also co-op housing, which is where you live in a house or an apartment building with a group of other students and you split the duties of the house like gardening, cleaning and cooking. And it's about a five hour work shift commitment per week in exchange for reduced rent and board. Finally, there's Greek housing, which is what I lived in last year. It's a great experience and it is for fraternities and sororities that have housing. They usually are a little bit cheaper than living in an on-campus apartment or living in dorms. And it's just a great way to live with a group of students um, and to be in a community here at Cal. But there are so many student organizations that you will find that experience is pretty universal no matter what organization you choose to dedicate your time to. Last thing to note, we also can purchase an additional meal plan no matter where you're living. So if you really do not like to cook for yourself or you miss dining hall food, you can always opt for that. Yeah, I definitely love the dining hall food, so I might have to opt for that in the coming years. On to some of our health services. We have the Tang Center, so this is where you can go for urgent care, primary care, counseling, physical therapy, as well as a, a whole host of other resources. Students at Berkeley are required to have some form of major health insurance. So for me, I fall under my parents' insurance, but otherwise you can also purchase a student health insurance plan, also known as SHIP which has a ton of great, really great services included through the Tank Center. We also have the Optometry Eye Center, which is where you can get glasses, get your eyes checked. We have the Path to Care Center, which is for survivors of sexual violence or intimate partner violence, and they have confidential and free counseling. We also have some, you know, more whimsical stress relief. We have a certain club called De-Stress with Dogs, People just bring their dogs onto campus. You can pet them. It's, it's really fun, really easy going. We also have Lama Palooza, which is pretty unique. We, the campus brings on a bunch of llamas. I think it's usually during finals week or the week before. And they just roam around Memorial Glade. Students can hang out with them. It's just a fun, you know, more fun way to de-stress. I personally loved going to the dining hall to de-stress. So they're done some, uh, perhaps, excuse me, there are a bunch of different ways that you can find to de-stress that works the best for you. Moving on to safety, we have many different services to ensure that students both feel safe and are safe. We have the UC Police Department or UCPD, which works in tandem with the Berkeley City Police Department. We have these blue light poles, which you can see a picture of here. You basically just hit the button on there. They're located all throughout campus as well as the uh, dorms and emergency services will be called for you. We also have Warn Me, which gives you notifications if something happens in the city of Berkeley. I think a couple of years ago it was a mountain lion was spotted near campus. We're close to a lot of open space preserves, so I thought that was pretty funny. 
There's also the residence hall three point security system like Seneca mentioned, which is super useful. We also have a variety of night services. So there's a night safety shuttle, which you can actually uh, check where it is by looking at your phone. And this is free for students to use. It goes all throughout campus in Berkeley. And we also have Bear Walk, which actually operates 365 days a year, which I was pretty shocked to learn. And this is where a trained student will basically escort you home from wherever you may be. So let's say you went to the library, it's 3 a.m., you kind of lost track of time, and you're walking back home alone, and you just want someone to walk with, maybe just for fun too. You can call Bear Walk and they'll send someone to walk with you. I personally have never felt unsafe on campus, around campus, really at all in the Bay Area, but it's nice to know that there are all these resources, you know, in the event that I might uh, come into some sort of conflict. We also have a ton of great student resources on campus, in addition to those safety resources that Will just mentioned. And those include things like the Transfer Student Center, the Disabled Students Program, the Gender Equity Center, the Multicultural Community Center, Student Development for Chicanx, Latinx, Asian Pacific American, African American, and Native American students, as well as Cal Veteran Services, the Undocumented Students Program, and so many, many more that you would need probably 50 times the length of this presentation to list them all. And these are just great to really establish communities here at Cal, but also to discover opportunities, get assistance with anything you might be finding challenging. I know that I use the Student Learning Center and the Open Computing Facility, which is where you can print up to 200 pages for free every semester. I used those a ton and I would always ask, you know, the older students that worked there for advice and really just found it to be a great way to learn a bit more about Cal on the job, as they would say. And these are often located in Cesar Chavez Student Center, which is that building pictured there. Great place to go for many different things. And the Student Learning Center is in there as well as the Transfer Student Center. So lots of different awesome offices in there as well as the building that would be behind us if we were facing it standing on our campus, which would be the Martin Luther King Jr. Student Union. And then Eshelman Hall is another one of these places that houses lots of great student resources. So definitely recommend checking all of these out both online and if you visit our campus in person. Yeah, I totally agree, Seneca, that printing is sort of a lifesaver for me. So lots of great resources to take advantage of. And, and now we're going to get into some student life. So what else do you do outside of the classroom? We have over 1,200 student clubs which is kind of still unfathomable to me. I looked through the entire list uh, when I got to Berkeley to find stuff I'm interested in. And there are just so many clubs that you have never even heard of, whether it's you know dragon boat racing or concrete canoe building team, there are tons of options. You can volunteer through some of these clubs, as well as there are tons of volunteering opportunities through local organizations in Berkeley, or if you're looking to do international volunteering, sort of like what Seneca does, there are a bunch of jobs on campus, so in addition to being an ambassador like us, you can also work at the libraries, you can work at the dining halls. Also, Berkeley's a, you know, a, an urban environment. We're right next to Oakland and San Francisco, so there are tons of other jobs to find just in the Bay Area in general. You can do study abroad. I'm planning on going to Brazil, which I'm super excited about, and I love the fact that we have so many different options. So through UCEAP, which is our UC Education Abroad program, I can choose a program from any of the UC schools. I can also choose to do an independent program. Uh, and a lot of these programs can actually be cheaper than going to a UC. So study abroad is definitely feasible and there are lots of different ways you can get involved with that, whether you wanna do an internship abroad, study abroad, travel, whatever it may be. And then for some free time fun, there are concerts, workshops, sports games, like the football games I mentioned that I've actually come to love. We have tons of museums. Our anthropology museum actually has over 4 million objects, which is also sort of unfathomable to me, and tons of hiking. The Bay Area in general has incredible trails, and on the east side of our campus, it's just hills where you can look out over the whole Bay Area, uh, get a quick hike in walking from your dorm, so it's a really beautiful area. I can guarantee that you will never be bored at Berkeley. There's always something going on, whether it's a cultural event, you know, maybe your friends want to hike, a concert. There's so many things going on 
uh, that I've really enjoyed being so you know stimulated and definitely never bored. I totally agree. There's you will never run out of things to do here from the city of Berkeley to Oakland to San Francisco on campus off campus. You really can find so many great opportunities and activities here at Berkeley. One of those being athletics and athletics is a big part of Berkeley for some people. It's really depends on what you want it to be. For example, we have three different levels of competition for those who are interested in playing on a team. One of those being Division One, which is like our football team, our Division One athletes who were recruited from high school and they play for Cal against other schools in the Pac-12 conference. And really are, we, you know, we support all of our athletic teams. We go out, we cheer on our fellow Golden Bears and it's a great time. We also have club sports, which are a great way to compete at a level slightly less than division one, but it's still competitive. You do compete against other schools and you do get the good, good athlete backpack. So very, very fun. They, I believe they've got like club soccer club. I think they have club figure skating too. So lots of awesome club teams. I highly recommend checking out that website to learn more. We also have intramural and recreational sports for those that might not want that quite high of a level of competition, but these are a great way to make friends and expand your community here at Berkeley while still getting a workout in and having fun. So those things would include things like soccer, softball, um, volleyball, I believe. And so lots of different sports to be found there and lots of fun opportunities to make friends and have a blast. The California Memorial Stadium is home to a lot of our student athlete resources, such as the Simpson High Performance Center and the Athletic Study Center. So if you are one of those division one athletes, you do have those resources available to you to help you balance the load between student life and being a, an athlete at a very high level. Haas Pavilion is where our basketball, volleyball, and gymnastics teams compete. So we always like to pack the stands full of students and cheer on our student athletes there. It's a great time because um, it's always fun to support students. Plus it's actually free for all sports except football and basketball to go and watch. So you can totally pop in and catch the last bit of the gymnastics meet or if you wanna go see volleyball. So it's, it's just a really great opportunity to get some entertainment while supporting your fellow students. There's also the recreational sports facility. So that's like a gym where they have cardio equipment, badminton courts, basketball courts, and lots of awesome group exercise classes. So for example, I love to go there and do cardio dance. It's a great, great time. Everyone's just dancing their hearts out, not caring, nobody's judging. It's just a blast of a time to relieve a little bit of stress from school. And I highly recommend. There's also a satellite gym in Memorial Stadium that you can use that doesn't have the group exercise, but has all of those good cardio equipment and weightlifting. So definitely recommend checking those out when you're here. And lastly, we would just like to say that we have 207 Olympic medals from our students and alumni, which I think is pretty awesome. And 117 of those are actually gold medals. So definitely a pretty fun fact to be proud of as Golden Bears. Yeah, so I, I totally agree. The, the PE classes have actually been really fun and a lot are happening over Zoom now, which is also pretty fun. So you're a student here, you might need a place to study. We have a ton of libraries. We have 24 official libraries, as well as eight affiliate libraries, as well as a whole bunch of departmental libraries. So you can really easily find a place to study. All of these libraries have different atmospheres. We have over 13 million volumes as well as extensive online resources. I've definitely taken advantage of those with my summer classes right now. My personal favorite is the maps library. I actually was able to go in, find a map of where I live from 100 years ago and compare it with a, you know, sort of a tourist flyer from the last 10 years. And it was super interesting to see all the changes that have taken place. And, you know, every library kind of offers a different atmosphere so you can find a study space that works best for you. We also have a whole number of different research opportunities. One of these main programs is the Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program, or URAP. And this is a program that you can apply to every semester. You apply to specific research opportunities with professors and graduate students in an area you might want to participate in. And certain 
departments also have their own versions of these, like LRAP for linguistics. And I have a friend, I have friends doing research in chemistry or one on research, on one doing research on gesture or another one on Jewish history. So there are research opportunities regardless of the major discipline you're in. And you can also get opportunities through your specific department, whether that's cold emailing professors or graduate students or just talking with a professor you have. I know that a lot of professors are open to hearing um, how students might be able to contribute to their own research. So that's another great resource as well. I highly involved getting, or oh my goodness, I highly recommend getting involved with the research here at Cal. It's such an awesome place to be in research because there's just so much cutting edge research going on here and it is a very rewarding experience. We also have a lot of great outside of the classroom and outside of the lab or research space opportunities. So as we've mentioned, our campus has a pretty amazing location because we are located just 30 minutes away from San Francisco by public transportation, as well as right next to Oakland. And we back up onto the Berkeley Hills, which is a great place to go hiking. You can see on the top right, a photo of the beautiful view from the trails above our campus and so you can always go hiking up there on the fire trails which is the trails that run behind the Clark Kerr dorms as well as the just different hills on campus. We have a creek that runs through our campus too which I thought was just so cool. Students actually do research in the creek a lot so for my biology 1b class I went in there and I sampled different levels of macro invertebrates in the creek to see what the level of water quality was and I just thought that was super cool that I was able to do that right on our campus and they've actually adapted that lab into a really awesome virtual lab experience where you get videos and all of this really cool data so highly highly recommend checking out Strawberry Creek and maybe taking a class that does research in it. We also have some great trees and wildlife as well as just so many nooks and crannies to explore on our campus. Awesome. Thank you so much to Seneca and Will for that amazing presentation. We are going to head into Q&A now. So our first question is from Olivia. So Olivia asked, I've heard that the environment can be very competitive and less collaborative at Berkeley. What is the culture of the student body like? So um, anyone, uh, Will or Seneca, if you guys want to go ahead and take that one. Yeah, I can take that one. I think definitely it's a, that's a rumor that I heard coming into Cal, um, can't deny, but it is definitely a great thing like to dispel here because I have found all the students here at Cal to be so collaborative and so just nice and people are just really passionate about what they're doing, what they're studying, what they're researching. And so they really just want to share that passion with other people. Um, it's re it really does make for an excellent study environment, especially where people are forming study groups. Like as early as the first day of class, people will totally, if you're doing a group project, I have found that people really do put in the work and it makes it just so much more enjoyable of an experience. And you really do, you really do get a lot of collaboration with all of our classes, a lot of the hands-on ones, you form groups. And people are just very helpful. They want to, you know, they want to learn and they know that you have things to offer them and you have, they have things to offer you. So it's really just a great place to be collaborative and benefit from the shared knowledge of the entire group rather than being competitive because honestly, in the end, that benefits nobody. Yeah. Will, do you have anything to add for that one? Yeah, I mean, just to echo Seneca, I've, I mean, I've, feel like in most of my classes, I can't even imagine how I'd be competitive because the environment just isn't set up that way. For example, a lot of my classes are writing based or especially I take a lot of language classes because I love learning new languages. And I've always found that every single person is trying to you know, help out, maybe send you some helpful learning resources or some songs in the language they like. And so I've not had uh, any experience with competitiveness here at Berkeley, especially coming from a pretty competitive high school. So I've actually been really ha happy that it's been more collaborative here. Awesome. Definitely agree with the both of you. Um, a lot of the classes that I've taken have shown more of an atmosphere of collaboration um, rather than competition. 
So our next question is a little bit related to that, but it has to do more with what um, our large undergrad population does for um, our academic culture or maybe for the social environment that we have at Berkeley. So what are the, some of the positives and negatives of having this large undergraduate population? Um, if any one of you guys would like to start. I definitely think that having a large undergraduate population is very nice just because we have so many awesome opportunities. And it's also like, when you think about it, having a large undergraduate population really translates to you know, having a lot of friends. So it's a great place to meet people because everyone is just so passionate and so like, they just want to get involved and they want to change things. And so it really makes for an environment where you can easily meet people who have similar interests and who are passionate about the same things that you're passionate about. And so you're never really gonna run out of people to meet in that respect because there's always, you know, new people to meet in different organizations and you can make it feel smaller. So that's very good saying to include here. You can make a small school, uh, you can't make a small school feel big, but you can make a big school feel small. And that's just by creating communities like, in your dorm, on your floor, or joining clubs, a lot of which are now virtual, which is super great because even if you're, you know, halfway across the world, you can still meet other Berkeley students and make friends. And there's also just so many opportunities that come with having a lot of students, like all of the awesome resources I mentioned earlier, the student development. And then there's also just a lot of great, I mean, there's just so many awesome opportunities because a lot of students means a lot of alumni and a lot of alumni means a lot of cool internship opportunities that you can connect with and just a lot of exciting things to be had with a lot of students. The one drawback I would say of having a lot of students is that you do have to be a little bit flexible with your classes. Sometimes this isn't a huge issue. I think that it is definitely overblown much of the time, but when you're registering for classes, you might find in the first few years that you might have to shift your plan schedule around a little bit and that's totally fine. You know, flexibility is great and you will get the classes done. You just might not be able to get them at the ideal time of the day that you would want them or the semester that you would want them. So it's important to be flexible, but it's also important just to get out there and make friends. Great. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I feel like actually having a large undergrad population helps you learn how to stay flexible and also take initiative because that's something that you have to learn for the real world as well. Um, awesome, next question is for Will. Uh, Will, what makes UC Berkeley different from other UC schools like UCLA or UCSB? Um, yeah, go ahead and answer. Yeah, this is a really great question. Um, I'll just preface it with a couple things. One being that the UCs actually share a ton of resources. So, you know, we actually, I have access to library materials that are online from other schools right now. I'll also preface it with um, my sister was a tour guide at UCLA. I've had friends and family go to a bunch of the UCs and that obviously doesn't mean I know what it's like to go to school there, but I do have a bit of an idea of kind of what it's like and how it might be different. One big thing I noticed is our libraries. Uh, one of my friends at another UC kind of pointed, uh, he's giving me a tour of his school and he kind of pointed and was like, oh, these are our two libraries. And it just kind of shocked me for a second because I, I realized I was kind of taking for granted the fact that we have so many really interesting study spaces and so many resources on campus that some of the other UCs just don't have access to. I think another part of UC Berkeley students, which when I talk to my other friends who've come home or family and things that kind of differs, it's just the passion for kind of what Seneca talking, talked about, you know, passion as well as public service. I, I really feel strongly that UC Berkeley is not just educating for the sake of education, but is educating to make the world a better place. Uh, we, like Seneca said, we have a lot of students who were the number one feeder to Silicon Valley, as well as historically, we've been the number one feeder school to the Peace Corps. And you also see a lot of students and alumni who come back to work at Berkeley once they graduate or come back for a graduate degree. And I feel like this campus just takes hold of people and really wants, uh, really wants them to change and make sure that they're being the best version of themselves that they can be and that they're urging other, others to you know, think more widely about the world and really consider what other people are going through. 
So I think UC Berkeley sort of has this mentality about it of you know, communal experiences and making sure that other voices are heard. Beautifully said. Thank you so much, Will. Um, all right, so we're going to do our second to last question, um, which is how does Berkeley help students find jobs after they graduate? What are some internship opportunities that Berkeley offers? Seneca, you can go ahead. I can go for this one. Um, I think the big thing that I would recommend checking out is our Career Center. The Career Center connects a lot of students with things like mock interviews and different like reviews of applications if you're planning on going to graduate school or professional school or even just for job applications they'll read through your application for you and give you feedback they do resume workshops which are super helpful so just in general that's a great tool to have they also connect students with internships and jobs they have a platform called handshake which is basically like linkedin but specific to berkeley students so it's very easy to just hop on there and find jobs both on and off campus for part-time work, maybe while you're in school or even for a full-time job after graduation. So that is excellent. As I mentioned before, we have a very strong and active alumni network. So they will have career fairs where the alumni will come or even if they're not alumni, sometimes people will still come, but it is just really great to go to those and to see a bunch of opportunities and be connected with jobs and opportunities through those. So lots of career fairs. Some of them are virtual, some of them are in person. So really adaptable. And then the Career Center. I definitely would recommend checking those out. Cool. Great. Yes, I use all of those resources as well. Um, but with that, we are going to go ahead to our last question. For this one, we'll have Will go first and then Seneca go next. But last question is why Berkeley? So go ahead, tell us your Berkeley story and why you decided to um, make Berkeley your home. Yeah, thank you, Celine. So I think that my story starts out similarly to other people's in that I just wasn't that interested in going to Berkeley because I didn't really know much about it. And despite being in the Bay, I just didn't really have much information on the school. And so after getting in off the wait list and having gone to Cal Day, I actually got a lot more excited about it. Cal Day is our big open house. I was able to get an ultrasound of my tongue from the linguistics lab and you know kind of see how what happens when you talk which was super inspiring as well as I got to see an indigenous Peruvian group perform and so it really spoke to this wide diversity of experiences that you have and that was for me in just one day so I started to get a lot more excited about it and then I took a gap year and went abroad everyone in my program were usually juniors or seniors in college and by the end of the program, essentially every single one said that this was the best part of their college experience by far. And I, I sort of just started worrying like, oh man, you know, I've loved this program, but is it just gonna, you know, be downhill from this, from this on? And am I gonna kind of wish Berkeley was different because of this? And I was completely wrong about that. And, you know, those sort of worries were completely unfounded, which I'm super grateful for. I've actually, in coming to Berkeley and taking advantage of all these resources, I've actually found at times that Berkeley feels more international than when I was actually living internationally. Uh, for example, language classes. In the fall, I'll be taking classes in English, Spanish, Igbo, and Amharic, which is just insane. And I never really envisioned that for myself until I got here and, you know, started more, you know, dreaming about all of these opportunities that I have and all these things I want to do. And so for me, Berkeley has just been an incredibly inspiring experience, not just in ways that I can learn about myself and other people, but ways in which I can get involved so that other people have a voice and can take advantage of these same opportunities. And so I've been really grateful for my experience and it has far and away exceeded my time abroad. Danica? Yeah, I think I totally echo like Will's sentiment. Just this is such an incredible community to be a part of. And for me, it was so much about the people. I was between a few schools and I was deciding. And I remember just kind of weighing all of the pros and cons. And I was, I'm just such an indecisive person, first of all, but really was confused, didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I decided to just check out the incoming class Facebook pages for each of my schools. 
and to just look, read through all of the different profiles that people had posted in hopes of finding roommates and just see, okay, so if I'm going to go to school with these people, like, who are they? Let's get to know them. And I really saw in the Berkeley page that people were just so passionate and they were so excited. They had goals that they wanted to accomplish that I was like, oh my gosh, like these people want to change the world and they want to use their Berkeley education to do that. And I really saw these people as people that I could learn and grow from and with. And so I think it's really important when you're choosing a college to keep in mind who you want to be in four years. And how do you want your college experience to serve you and to make sure that you get to that person that you want to be? And so I think Berkeley has just so many awesome pathways to get there and the people are what make it amazing. So highly recommend just really thinking, who do I want to be and will this help me get there? That is what Berkeley has done for me. Awesome. Thank you so much to the both of you. Um, but unfortunately, this is going to be our uh, kind of ending of the tour today. Um, so go ahead and this is our contact us slide. Please follow us on social media at visit UC Berkeley on Instagram and Twitter. You can go ahead and email tour at berkeley.edu if you have any other questions. We have our back end folks and other student ambassadors who are ready to answer your question for you. Um, we also have a blog. So beartalk.berkeley.edu is where you can find a bunch of other stories and experiences from different students and ambassadors, just like Will and Seneca. Um, and as I said before, if you missed any part of this presentation for any reason, no worries. You can go ahead and refer to a different recorded virtual visit on our YouTube channel at Visit UC Berkeley. Uh, and as Will mentioned before in the beginning of the presentation, um, we are celebrating 150 years of woman, which is an amazing achievement um, for Berkeley. And uh, you can go ahead to 150w.berkeley.edu to see all of the different events that also have shifted to a virtual setting. Uh, as I said before, I invite you to read our chancellor's message on standing to standing together at news.berkeley.edu and at coronavirus.berkeley.edu you can see all of the COVID-19 resources that UC Berkeley is offering as well as how we're supporting our students in the fall semester. And lastly, if you would like to sign up for an admissions presentation, go to admissions.berkeley.edu slash visit to sign up for one of those. Um, but with that, I want to again, thank you all so much for tuning into our presentation today. Thank you to Will and Seneca for being amazing tour givers. And we are going to end with a Go Bears on three. One, two, three. Go Bears! Go Bears. Thank you guys. <laughs>